In the grand narrative of human existence, the quest for happiness remains a timeless odyssey, an eternal puzzle that each soul attempts to solve in the labyrinth of life. This quest, as old as humanity itself, beckons us to ask, what does it mean to live a truly happy life? Is happiness a serendipitous discovery, a treasure found on the path of life, or is it, perhaps, a masterpiece we painstakingly create with our own hands? The answers to these questions lie not in the fleeting pleasures of the external world but within the profound depths of philosophical inquiry. Happiness, as we've come to understand, isn't something that one stumbles upon by chance. It's an art, a deliberate practice, a piece of music we compose note by note in the symphony of daily existence. This realization opens up a new paradigm in our pursuit of joy, the idea that happiness is not found but made. This crafted joy is not a mere reaction to external circumstances, but a state of being, a canvas on which our attitudes, perceptions and actions paint the picture of our lives. It is in this canvas of existence that we begin to see happiness not as a destination to arrive at, but a journey to be experienced, a journey where each moment, each breath and each heartbeat contributes to the grand masterpiece of our life. Diving deeper into this exploration of joy, we encounter the philosophy of slow living, a counter-movement to the frenzied pace of modern existence. Slow living teaches us to savor life one moment at a time, to embrace the fullness of our experiences without the constant need for acceleration. This art of slowing down doesn't imply idleness, but an intentional choice to engage more meaningfully with the present. It's about finding beauty in the ordinary, about recognizing the richness of life that unfolds in the quiet moments we so often overlook in our race against time. In the slow, deliberate savoring of life, we find a happiness that is profound and enduring. A happiness rooted not in the quantity of our experiences, but in their quality. The pursuit of happiness, however, presents us with paradoxical paths, one of which is hedonism, the philosophy that pleasure is the highest good and proper aim of human life. But is hedonism truly the secret to a good life? This exploration isn't about advocating for a life of unbridled pleasure-seeking, but understanding the role of pleasure in the pursuit of happiness. Hedonism, in its nuanced examination, invites us to consider how pleasure, when pursued with wisdom and moderation, can contribute to a fulfilling life. It challenges us to redefine our understanding of pleasure, to distinguish between fleeting delights and those that add genuine value to our existence. Amidst these reflections on happiness, the ancient wisdom of Stoicism emerges as a guiding light. With its 12 transformative lessons, Stoicism provides a blueprint for resilience, inner peace, and joy. Stoicism teaches us that happiness isn't contingent upon external conditions, but upon our internal state, our responses, and our perceptions. It offers practical strategies for navigating life's inevitable challenges, for maintaining equanimity amidst chaos, and for cultivating a happiness that is self-sustained and impervious to the vicissitudes of fate. As we go through these philosophical lessons, the creation of happiness, the art of slow living, the inquiry into hedonism, and the stoic path to joy, a comprehensive guide to happy living emerges. This guide doesn't offer simple answers or quick fixes, but invites you on a journey of self-discovery, a journey where happiness is not an external treasure to be found, but an internal light to be kindled and nurtured. Truth About Happiness Happiness depends upon ourselves, proclaimed Aristotle, a timeless reminder that the essence of our joy lies within, not without. This profound statement invites us to delve deeper into what constitutes true contentment and how it can be attained. 
Aristotle's perspective aligns with the broader philosophical view that contentment is an internal state, an outcome of our virtues, and the way we choose to live our lives. It's a far cry from the hedonistic belief that pleasure is the highest good. Instead, Aristotle and many philosophers advocate for eudaimonia, a term often translated as happiness, but more accurately described as flourishing or well-being. The psychological viewpoint converges with this philosophy, though it often approaches the subject from a more empirical angle. Psychologists have long studied what makes people content and have found that it's less about external circumstances and more about how individuals perceive and react to their environment. This is where the concept of subjective well-being comes into play. It's a term used to describe how individuals evaluate their own lives. These evaluations include emotional reactions to events, as well as cognitive judgments about one's satisfaction with life as a whole. This subjective nature implies that two people, in identical circumstances, might report vastly different levels of well-being. It's crucial to distinguish between short-lived pleasures and enduring joy. The former, often referred to as hedonic pleasure, is fleeting. It's the burst of euphoria you get from eating a delicious meal, buying a new gadget, or receiving praise. These moments are bright but brief, like fireworks that dazzle and then disappear into the night. Enduring joy, on the other hand, is akin to a deep flowing river. It's more about a sustained state of satisfaction, a sense of peace and fulfillment that pervades regardless of external conditions. This type of joy is often linked to meaningful activities, personal growth, and deep connections with others. Understanding this distinction leads to a pivotal realization. While our circumstances can influence our sense of well-being, they don't dictate it. The key lies in our internal state and the choices we make. This concept is not just a philosophical musing, but is backed by psychological research. Studies in positive psychology, for instance, have shown that our actions, thoughts and attitudes have a significant impact on our sense of well-being. This doesn't mean external factors like financial stability, health and social relationships aren't important. Rather, it suggests that the way we choose to perceive and interact with these factors plays a critical role in our overall sense of contentment. Take, for example, the concept of gratitude. Regularly practicing gratitude Actively acknowledging and appreciating the positive aspects of life can shift our focus from what's missing to what's present. This shift in perspective can profoundly impact our overall satisfaction. It's a simple yet powerful illustration of how our internal state can transform our experience of life. Similarly, the concept of resilience highlights the importance of our reactions to life's challenges Resilient individuals tend to recover from setbacks more quickly and use their experiences as opportunities for growth. This doesn't diminish the severity of the challenges faced, rather it underscores the power of response and perspective. Therefore, when Aristotle suggests that contentment depends upon ourselves, he is touching on a fundamental truth about the human experience. It's a call to look inward to focus on cultivating virtues, attitudes, and perspectives that foster a deep, enduring sense of well-being. It's about recognizing that while we can't always control what happens to us, we have considerable power over how we respond to our experiences. Understanding contentment involves recognizing its subjective nature, differentiating between fleeting pleasures and deeper joy, and acknowledging the significant role our internal state and choices play in our overall sense of well-being. It's a journey inward, a process of self-discovery and growth, where we learn to navigate the complex interplay of our emotions, thoughts and experiences to cultivate a life of true flourishing. The Happiness Mindset The mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven. This poignant assertion by John Milton captures the profound impact of our mindset on our life experience. The lens through which we view the world, our mindset, doesn't just color our perceptions, 
it can fundamentally transform them. A positive mindset can illuminate even the darkest circumstances with rays of hope, while a negative outlook can overshadow the brightest moments with clouds of despair. The concept of mindset extends far beyond mere optimism or pessimism. It encompasses our entire approach to life, how we interpret events, cope with challenges, and perceive our own abilities and worth. Carol Dweck, a renowned psychologist, brought this into sharp focus with her research on fixed versus growth mindsets. A fixed mindset assumes that our character, intelligence, and creative ability are static givens, which we can't change in any meaningful way. In contrast, a growth mindset thrives on challenge and sees failure not as evidence of unintelligence but as a heartening springboard for growth and for stretching our existing abilities. This distinction is crucial as it underscores the power of belief in shaping our reality. Mindset isn't just about how we approach our abilities and challenges, it's also about how we approach our day-to-day -day experiences. Practices like gratitude, mindfulness, and positive thinking are tools that help shape a beneficial mindset. Gratitude, for instance, shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have. It's about recognizing and appreciating the value of our experiences, relationships, and possessions, however small they may be. This practice has been linked to increased well-being, with research showing that gratitude can improve our mental health, enhance empathy, reduce aggression, and even improve our sleep. Mindfulness, another critical practice, involves being fully present and engaged in the moment, aware of our thoughts and feelings without distraction or judgment. It's about experiencing life as it unfolds, rather than being caught up in ruminations about the past or worries about the future. Mindfulness has been shown to reduce stress, combat depression, and improve cognitive functions like attention and concentration. Positive thinking, meanwhile, doesn't mean ignoring life's less pleasant situations. It means approaching unpleasantness in a more positive and productive way. It's about making the best of any situation looking for solutions rather than dwelling on problems and viewing challenges as opportunities for growth. To cultivate a positive mindset, it's essential to practice these techniques regularly. This could mean starting each day by listing things you're grateful for, engaging in mindfulness meditation, or consciously reframing negative thoughts into positive ones. For instance, instead of thinking, I'll never be good at this, a growth-oriented mindset would suggest, I haven't mastered this yet, but I'm improving every day. Another practical tip is to surround oneself with positive influences. The people we interact with can significantly impact our mindset. Seeking out and nurturing relationships with those who inspire, support and challenge us can foster a more positive outlook on life. Additionally, setting realistic and achievable goals can help maintain a positive mindset. Goals give us direction and a sense of purpose. Achieving these goals, no matter how small, can provide a sense of accomplishment and reinforce a positive outlook. Regularly engaging in activities that bring joy and fulfillment is also vital. Whether it's a hobby, exercise, or spending time in nature, these activities can provide a respite from stress and bolster a positive mindset. Lastly, cultivating self-compassion is crucial. Being kind to oneself in moments of failure or disappointment can prevent the spiral into negative self-talk. It's about acknowledging that perfection is unattainable and that making mistakes is a natural part of the human experience. Developing a positive mindset is about more than just feeling good. It's about creating a foundation for a fulfilling life. It's a journey that requires effort, practice and patience, but the rewards are immeasurable. A positive mindset not only enhances our life experience, but also empowers us to become the best versions of ourselves. Overcoming Obstacles to Happiness The only thing that will make you happy is being happy with who you are and not who people think you are. Goldie Hawn's words resonate with profound truth. 
emphasizing the essence of self-acceptance and authenticity. This statement leads us into a crucial aspect of personal contentment, overcoming the obstacles that often stand in our way. These barriers, including negative thinking, fear, past traumas and societal pressures, can significantly impede our journey towards a fulfilling life. Negative thinking, often manifesting as a persistent inner critic, can distort our perception of reality, leading to a skewed and often pessimistic view of our lives and capabilities. This pattern of thought can trap us in a cycle of self-doubt and despair, hindering our ability to recognize and appreciate the positive aspects of our lives. Fear, closely tied to negative thinking, is another formidable barrier. It can paralyze us, preventing us from taking risks or pursuing goals, thus limiting our potential for growth and fulfillment. Past traumas too play a significant role in shaping our present state of mind. Unresolved traumas can leave deep psychological scars, influencing our behaviors and responses to current situations in ways that might be detrimental to our well-being. Societal pressures further compound these challenges. The expectations and norms imposed by society often dictate how we should live, who we should be, and what we should value. This external influence can lead to a life lived in accordance with others' expectations rather than our own genuine desires and values, resulting in a sense of alienation from our true selves. Addressing these barriers requires a multifaceted approach. For negative thinking, cognitive behavioral strategies can be effective. These involve identifying and challenging negative thought patterns replacing them with more balanced and positive ways of thinking. Techniques such as mindfulness and meditation can also help by grounding us in the present moment and reducing the power of negative thoughts. To combat fear, exposure strategies can be beneficial. This involves gradually and systematically facing the things we fear in a controlled and safe environment, thereby reducing the power fear holds over us. This process can help build confidence and resilience, essential components of a fulfilling life. Dealing with past traumas often necessitates professional support, such as therapy or counseling. These services provide a safe space to explore and process traumatic experiences, leading to healing and a better understanding of oneself. Self-compassion and self-care are also vital in this process as they allow us to treat ourselves with kindness and understanding, fostering a nurturing environment for healing. Regarding societal pressures, cultivating self-awareness and authenticity is key. This involves introspection to understand our true values, desires and aspirations, independent of societal expectations. Living authentically, means aligning our actions and choices with these intrinsic values, leading to a more congruent and satisfying life. Goldie Hawn's quote underscores the importance of self-acceptance in this process. Embracing who we are, flaws and all, and releasing the need for external validation can free us from many of the barriers that impede our contentment. This doesn't mean ignoring areas for growth, but rather accepting our current state while striving for personal improvement. Practicing self-acceptance involves challenging societal stereotypes and embracing our unique qualities. It means letting go of the pursuit of perfection and accepting that making mistakes is an integral part of the human experience. Encouraging self-compassion and empathy towards oneself can significantly aid this process. By treating ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer a good friend, we can build a more positive relationship with ourselves. Another strategy is to establish healthy boundaries. This means learning to say no to demands that conflict with our values or well-being and not feeling guilty for prioritizing our needs. Setting these boundaries can help protect our mental and emotional health fostering a sense of control and self-respect. 
In essence, overcoming obstacles to personal contentment involves a combination of introspection, therapeutic strategies, cultivating self-acceptance, and living authentically. It's about recognizing and addressing the internal and external factors that impede our well-being and taking proactive steps to mitigate their impact. By doing so, we can pave the way for a more fulfilling and contented life, grounded in self-acceptance and authenticity. Power of Purpose and Goals Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. Albert Schweitzer's insightful words capture the essence of a fulfilling life, one where purpose and passion intersect. This perspective turns the traditional view of success on its head, suggesting that true achievement comes not from reaching societal benchmarks of success, but from engaging in activities that resonate with our deepest selves. The concept of purpose is central to human experience. Having a sense of purpose means knowing who we are, what we value, and what we aspire to contribute to the world. It's about finding meaning and direction in life. When our daily activities align with this sense of purpose, they become more than just tasks. They transform into steps along a path of personal fulfillment. This alignment brings a profound sense of satisfaction and joy far deeper than the fleeting pleasure of superficial achievements. Setting personal goals is a practical extension of this concept. Goals provide a tangible way to channel our energies and aspirations. They act as milestones on our journey towards a life of purpose. These goals can be varied, from professional achievements and personal development to hobbies and community service. What matters most is their alignment with our deeper values and passions. Take, for example, someone who finds deep satisfaction in artistic expression. Setting a goal to complete a certain number of paintings over a year can provide a sense of direction and accomplishment. For another whose passion lies in helping others, volunteering a set number of hours each week at a local shelter can be incredibly fulfilling. These goals, rooted in personal values and passions, provide a sense of progress and achievement that feeds into an overall sense of contentment. It's important to note that the journey towards these goals is as significant as their attainment. The process of striving towards a goal, overcoming challenges, and growing along the way contributes significantly to a sense of personal accomplishment and fulfillment. This journey imbues our lives with a sense of purpose and direction, making our daily experiences more meaningful. Moreover, pursuing goals that resonate with our passions has the added benefit of intrinsic motivation. When we are intrinsically motivated, we engage in activities for the sheer enjoyment and satisfaction they bring, not for external rewards. This type of motivation is more sustainable and fulfilling than extrinsic motivation, which relies on external rewards or recognition. When our actions are driven by intrinsic motivation, we are more likely to persevere through challenges and experience a deeper sense of fulfillment. The pursuit of passion-driven goals also contributes to personal growth. Each step towards a goal, each obstacle overcome, teaches us something new about ourselves. We develop new skills, build resilience, and gain confidence. This growth is integral to a fulfilling life as it enhances our sense of self-efficacy and enriches our experience of the world. However, it's crucial to approach goal setting with flexibility and self-compassion. Rigidly adhering to goals without considering changing circumstances can lead to frustration and burnout. Goals should serve as guides, not shackles. They should be flexible enough to accommodate the unpredictable nature of life and we should be kind to ourselves when our paths toward these goals take unexpected turns. The power of purpose and goals lies in their ability to provide direction, meaning 
and a sense of accomplishment in our lives. Aligning our goals with our values and passions makes our journey towards them more enjoyable and fulfilling. It turns the pursuit of success into a personal journey of growth and fulfillment, rather than a race towards externally defined benchmarks. In this way, we find that success, as Schweitzer suggests, is a natural byproduct of a life lived with purpose and joy. Joy through self-care and wellness. Happiness is a state of activity, Aristotle astutely observed, suggesting that it's in our actions and efforts where true contentment is nurtured. This insight is particularly relevant when considering the role of self-care and wellness in cultivating a fulfilling life. Far from being mere indulgences, self-care practices are vital components in maintaining and enhancing our physical and mental health both of which are foundational to our overall well-being. The importance of physical health in this equation cannot be overstated. Our physical state greatly influences our mental and emotional states. Regular exercise, for example, is not just about physical fitness or managing weight. It has profound effects on our mental health. Engaging in physical activity releases endorphins, often referred to as feel-good hormones, which can elevate mood and reduce stress. Exercise also enhances self-esteem and can be a powerful tool in managing anxiety and depression. It's a perfect embodiment of Aristotle's concept of activity leading to a state of well-being. A balanced diet is another cornerstone of physical health with direct implications for mental and emotional well-being. Nutritious foods provide the energy and nutrients necessary for the optimal functioning of our brains and bodies. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, and healthy fats can improve cognitive function, mood, and energy levels. On the other hand, a diet high in processed foods and sugars can have the opposite effect, potentially leading to mood swings and energy crashes. Adequate sleep is another critical aspect of self-care. Sleep is the body's time to repair and rejuvenate. Lack of sleep can lead to a host of problems, including irritability, difficulty concentrating, and impaired cognitive function. Chronic sleep deprivation can even contribute to the development of mental health issues, such as depression and anxiety. Ensuring a regular sleep schedule and creating a restful sleeping environment are essential steps in maintaining both physical and mental health. Engaging in hobbies and activities that bring joy and relaxation is equally important. Hobbies provide a break from the routine and stresses of daily life. They offer an opportunity to engage in activities purely for the sake of enjoyment, which can be incredibly rejuvenating. Whether it's painting, gardening, playing a musical instrument or hiking, hobbies provide a sense of accomplishment and can be a great source of joy and fulfillment. However, it's important to recognize that self-care is not a one-size-fits-all endeavor. What works for one person may not work for another. The key is to find practices that resonate with you and fit into your lifestyle. This could mean a daily walk, meditation, cooking healthy meals, or simply taking time to read or relax. The act of taking time for oneself to engage in activities that nurture and replenish is a crucial part of maintaining well-being. Furthermore, actively caring for one's well-being extends beyond physical health. Mental and emotional health are equally important. This can involve seeking professional help when needed, such as therapy or counseling. It also involves cultivating a positive mindset, as discussed earlier, and practicing self-compassion and kindness. In today's stressful world, it's easy to neglect self-care, to prioritize work or other obligations over our own well-being. However, as Aristotle implies, our well-being is not a passive state, but an active pursuit. It requires effort and attention. By prioritizing self-care and wellness, we are not just taking steps to maintain our health, 
we are actively cultivating a foundation upon which a fulfilling life can be built. It's about recognizing that caring for ourselves is not selfish but essential. It's an investment in ourselves, one that pays dividends in the form of improved health, increased energy, and a deeper sense of contentment and fulfillment. Embracing change and growth. The journey towards a fulfilling life is seldom a straight path. It's replete with changes, challenges, and growth opportunities. Embracing these changes, rather than resisting them, can be a powerful catalyst for personal development and satisfaction. Change is an inevitable part of life, whether it's transitioning to a new job, moving to a different city, starting or ending relationships, or dealing with life's unexpected twist, change challenges us to adapt and grow. While it's natural to feel discomfort or fear in the face of change, these moments also present invaluable opportunities for growth. Each change forces us out of our comfort zones, prompting us to develop new skills, perspectives, and resilience. Courage plays a crucial role in this process. It takes courage to step into the unknown and embrace change, especially when the outcome is uncertain. However, it's in these moments of uncertainty that we often discover our true strengths and capabilities. By facing change head-on, we learn more about ourselves, our values, desires, and what truly matters to us. This self-discovery is a key component of a fulfilling life. Moreover, Challenges and obstacles, often encountered during times of change, are not just hurdles to overcome. They are opportunities to grow stronger and wiser. When we face challenges, we are forced to tap into our inner resources, be it creativity, determination, or resilience. Overcoming these challenges builds confidence and a sense of accomplishment, further enhancing our sense of fulfillment. To illustrate, consider the story of someone who, after years in a stable but unfulfilling job, decides to pursue a passion project. The transition involves risk financial uncertainty, long hours and the possibility of failure. Yet, through this process, the individual discovers a deep sense of purpose and fulfillment that was lacking in their previous work. This change, though fraught with challenges, ultimately leads to a more satisfying and meaningful life. Another example could be someone who overcomes a fear of public speaking. Initially, the prospect of speaking in front of an audience is daunting. However, by facing this fear, the individual not only improves their communication skills, but also gains confidence and a sense of empowerment. What once was a source of anxiety becomes a source of strength and pride. These stories underscore the transformative power of embracing change and growth. They demonstrate that while change can be uncomfortable, it can also be immensely rewarding. The journey of personal growth is not about avoiding challenges or staying within the safety of familiar territory. It's about having the courage to face change, to learn and grow from each experience and to continuously evolve as individuals. This might mean trying new things, taking risks, or challenging long-held beliefs. It's about being open to new experiences and perspectives, even if they differ from our own. It's also important to cultivate resilience during times of change. This involves developing a positive mindset, as discussed earlier, and utilizing support systems such as friends, family, or mentors. Having a support network can provide encouragement and guidance during challenging times. In essence, embracing change and growth is about recognizing that life's most rewarding experiences often come from its most challenging moments. It's about understanding that personal growth is an ongoing journey, not a destination. By adopting a mindset that views change as an opportunity rather than a threat, we open ourselves up to a world of possibilities and a deeper sense of fulfillment. 
It's a journey that requires courage, resilience, and an openness to new experiences, but it is one that leads to a richer, more rewarding life. Creating happiness through relationships. The greatest happiness you can have is knowing that you do not necessarily require happiness. William Soroyan's intriguing statement highlights the paradoxical nature of finding fulfillment, often discovered in the selfless acts within our relationships and connections. The impact of social ties on our well being is profound and multifaceted. Humans, as inherently social beings, thrive on connections with others. These relationships, be they familial, romantic, platonic, or professional, profoundly shape our experiences and perceptions of the world. The interaction between giving and receiving in relationships plays a critical role in shaping our sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. It's in the balance of these two actions that the true essence of meaningful connections is found. When we give, whether it's time, attention, support, or love, we step outside of ourselves and our own needs. This act of giving can be deeply fulfilling. It fosters a sense of purpose and connection, reinforcing our bonds with others and enhancing our sense of belonging. Receiving, on the other hand, allows us to feel valued and cared for. It's a reminder that we are not alone, that we are part of a larger network of individuals who care for each other. Being able to accept support, love, and kindness from others is crucial to building strong, healthy relationships. It's important to recognize that receiving is not a sign of weakness. Rather, it's an integral part of the reciprocal nature of human relationships. Meaningful connections contribute significantly to our sense of joy and fulfillment. Engaging in deep, authentic relationships where we can be ourselves without fear of judgment or rejection provides a sense of security and acceptance. These relationships offer a safe space for us to share our thoughts, feelings, and experiences, contributing to our emotional and psychological well-being. Healthy relationships are characterized by mutual respect, trust, and understanding. They require effort, communication, and compromise from all parties involved. Cultivating these relationships involves being present, actively listening, showing empathy, and expressing appreciation. It also means setting healthy boundaries, ensuring that our relationships are mutually supportive and respectful. Being part of a community further enhances our sense of belonging and purpose. Communities, whether based on shared interests, goals, or geographical locations, provide a sense of identity and connection. They offer opportunities for social interaction, support, and collaboration. Participating in community activities can be a source of joy and fulfillment as it allows us to contribute to something larger than ourselves. However, it's crucial to acknowledge that not all relationships or communities are positive or healthy. It's important to recognize when a relationship or community is detrimental to our well-being and to take steps to address this. This may involve seeking to improve the relationship through communication and boundary setting or in some cases, distancing oneself from toxic or harmful situations. Cultivating healthy relationships and being part of a community doesn't mean losing our sense of individuality. It's about finding a balance between our personal needs and desires and our interactions with others. It's in this balance that we find a sense of harmony and fulfillment. The impact of relationships and social connections on our well-being is immense. These connections provide support, a sense of belonging, and opportunities for personal growth. They are a source of strength, comfort, and joy. The balance of giving and receiving within these relationships is essential to creating meaningful and fulfilling connections. By cultivating healthy relationships and actively participating in communities, we enhance our overall sense of well-being contributing to a richer, more satisfying life.
we've delved deep into the multifaceted nature of creating a fulfilling life, discovering that it's not a singular act, but a tapestry woven from various threads, understanding, mindset, overcoming obstacles, purpose, self-care, embracing change and nurturing relationships. Each of these elements contributes uniquely to the tapestry, enriching our experiences and guiding us towards a life marked by depth and fulfillment. Our first thread, understanding the true nature of contentment, reminds us that it's a state we create, not a treasure we find. This understanding liberates us from the endless pursuit of external sources of joy, directing our focus inward to where real transformation begins. We learned that the power of our mindset in shaping our reality cannot be overstated. By nurturing a positive outlook, we open ourselves to experiences that enrich our lives, emphasizing that the quality of our thoughts significantly influences the quality of our lives. Overcoming obstacles is a testament to our resilience. We've seen that challenges such as negative thinking, fear, and societal pressures are not roadblocks, but stepping stones to greater self-awareness and strength. The power of purpose and goals teaches us that fulfillment often lies in the pursuit of what genuinely matters to us, aligning our actions with our deepest values and passions. In discussing self-care, we're reminded of the age-old wisdom that to pour into others, we must first fill ourselves. Our physical and mental health are the bedrock upon which we build a life of joy and meaning. Engaging in activities that nourish our bodies and minds is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Embracing change and personal growth is perhaps one of the most challenging yet rewarding threads. It requires courage to step into the unknown, but it's in this space of uncertainty that we often find our greatest strengths and uncover new opportunities for growth. Finally, the power of relationships and community beautifully illustrates that our connections with others are not just parts of our lives, but are integral to our sense of well-being. These connections remind us that we are not alone on this journey. We are part of a larger tapestry of human experience. In weaving these threads together, we create a life not defined by fleeting moments of pleasure, but characterized by enduring fulfillment and joy. It's a journey that requires effort, patience, and persistence. There will be times of doubt and difficulty, but these are not signs of failure. They're part of the human experience, opportunities for growth and deeper understanding. As you move forward, remember that the creation of a fulfilling life is an ongoing process. It's not about perfection, it's about progress. Each day brings new opportunities to learn, grow, and contribute in meaningful ways. Embrace these opportunities with an open heart and a curious mind. In closing, let this be your motivation. You have the power to create a life of fulfillment and joy. It's within you, waiting to be unleashed. So take the lessons learned, the insights gained, and the wisdom shared, and weave your unique tapestry. The journey to fulfillment is not a race, it's a journey to be savored, step by step, moment by moment. Keep moving forward, keep growing, and keep creating the life you envision. The path is yours to tread, the tapestry yours to weave. Go forth and create your masterpiece. In our rush to do everything faster, we end up doing everything worse. Carl Honore. In a world that moves at breakneck speed, where the tick of the clock dictates our lives and the buzz of technology constantly interrupts our thoughts, it's easy to lose sight of the art of living itself. This is where the philosophy of slow living steps in a gentle yet powerful reminder that there is more to life than just racing to the finish line. As Carl Honoré, a vocal advocate of the slow movement, eloquently put it, in our rush to do everything faster, we end up doing everything worse. This simple statement encapsulates the essence of slow living, 
a philosophy that encourages us to break free from the shackles of haste and urgency and embrace a life lived with intention, mindfulness, and a deep appreciation for the present moment. At its core, slow living is not about doing everything at a snail's pace. Rather, it's about finding the right speed to do things with purpose, quality, and a deeper sense of satisfaction. It's a philosophy that challenges the modern narrative of more is better, urging us to step back and question our relentless pursuit of efficiency and speed. This lifestyle choice is a conscious effort to decelerate the pace of our lives, allowing us to breathe, reflect, and engage more fully with our surroundings and our inner selves. The idea of slow living stems from the slow food movement, which began in Italy in the 1980s as a protest against the opening of a fast food restaurant in Rome. This movement, which prioritized local food traditions and sustainable agriculture, soon blossomed into a global crusade against the homogenization of culture and the relentless pace of modern life. Today, the concept of slow living has seeped into various aspects of our lives, from slow travel and slow fashion, to slow parenting and slow education, each advocating for a more measured, mindful and sustainable approach to these areas. Slow living is, in many ways, a personal journey, a path that leads to greater self-awareness and a more harmonious relationship with time. It encourages us to pause and savor life's simple pleasures, to engage in activities that bring joy and fulfillment, and to cultivate relationships that are meaningful and enduring. It's about making a conscious choice to prioritize quality over quantity, to value experiences over possessions, and to find beauty in the ordinary and the everyday. Embracing slow living doesn't mean rejecting technology or modern conveniences. Rather, it's about using them in a way that enhances our lives without dominating them. It's about finding balance in a world that often seems unbalanced, about rediscovering the rhythm that resonates with our individual spirit and aligns with our personal values and aspirations. In this context, slow living becomes an act of rebellion, a way to reclaim control over our time and our lives. It's a statement against the culture of instant gratification and perpetual busyness that defines much of our modern existence. By choosing to live slowly, we are choosing to live deliberately, to make room for growth, creativity, and a deeper connection with the world around us. As we delve into the various facets of slow living, we will explore how this philosophy can be applied to different areas of our lives. From the way we eat, and the way we work, to the way we play, and the way we rest. Slow living offers a blueprint for a life that is richer, more meaningful, and more in tune with the natural rhythms of the world. Let's embark on this journey together, a journey towards a life that is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. Let's discover the art of slow living, one mindful step at a time. Lesson 1. Embracing Daily Rituals Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Buddha This timeless wisdom echoes profoundly in the context of our first exploration in the journey of slow living. Embracing Daily Rituals Rituals, often perceived as mundane or routine, are in fact powerful tools that can anchor us in the present, providing structure, comfort, and a sense of grounding in our fast-paced lives. In a world where constant change and uncertainty seem to be the only constants, establishing daily rituals becomes an act of self-care and mindfulness. These rituals need not be elaborate. They can be as simple as a morning cup of coffee savored in silence, a short walk in the park, or the nightly routine of reading before bed. The key lies in their regularity and the intention behind them. 
When we engage in these rituals, we are not just performing tasks, we are consciously creating moments in our day that are ours alone untouched by the external demands of the world. These rituals serve as anchors, holding us steady in the swirling currents of our busy lives. They give us something to look forward to, a moment of calm in the storm. When we start our day with a ritual, we set the tone for the hours that follow. Similarly, ending our day with a ritual helps us unwind and prepare for restful sleep. In these moments, we find a rare opportunity to pause, reflect, and connect with ourselves. This connection is vital for our mental and emotional well-being, offering a chance to check in with our inner selves, to align our actions with our values, and to find joy in the simplicity of the moment. These daily rituals are not just about self-reflection, they also have the power to transform our perception of time. In a society that values productivity above all else, where every minute is expected to be filled with purpose and achievement, rituals allow us to reclaim time for ourselves. They teach us that not every moment needs to be productive in the conventional sense. Some moments can simply be about being, experiencing the world around us, savoring the sensations of the present and acknowledging our existence in its fullest form. Creating meaningful routines in our daily life also helps us cultivate a sense of stability and normalcy, especially in times of stress or upheaval. When the world around us feels chaotic and unpredictable, our rituals can be a source of comfort and reliability. They remind us that, despite the ever-changing nature of life, there are still aspects that are within our control, our actions, our thoughts, and how we choose to spend our time. As we integrate these rituals into our lives, we may find that they evolve and change, just as we do. What once brought us peace and joy may no longer resonate in the same way, and that's okay. The beauty of rituals lies in their fluidity. They can be adapted, modified, and reinvented to suit our current needs and circumstances. The important thing is to remain mindful and intentional about them, to recognize their value in our journey towards slow living. Embracing daily rituals is about more than just creating routines. It's about crafting a life that is intentional, mindful, and deeply connected to the present. It's about recognizing that in the ordinary, we can find the extraordinary, and in the mundane, the magical. Lesson 2. The Beauty of Simplicity Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Confucius In this age of consumerism and information overload, where abundance and complexity are often mistaken for success and happiness, the call for simplicity becomes not just a whisper but a resonating demand for a return to the basics. Simplifying life to focus on what truly matters is an art in itself, a conscious stripping away of the non-essential to make space for the essential. At the heart of simplicity lies the concept of minimalism, not just as an aesthetic choice, but as a mindset and a way of life. It's about reducing the clutter, both physical and mental, that crowds our lives and clouds our judgment. This clutter isn't just the tangible mess in our homes and workspaces, it's also the intangible mess in our minds, the excess of thoughts, worries, and distractions that keep us from experiencing the present fully. Embracing minimalism in possessions and thoughts is akin to setting oneself free from the chains of excess. Minimalism isn't about deprivation, rather, it's about finding abundance in less. It's about recognizing that having fewer possessions can lead to more freedom, more energy, and more focus. When we declutter our spaces, we declutter our minds. We remove the things that distract us, that drain our energy, that keep us mired in a perpetual state of wanting more. This creates room for us to breathe, to think, to create, and to enjoy the things that truly matter, our relationships, our passions, our peace of mind, 
In simplifying our lives, we also simplify our thoughts. We learn to distinguish between what deserves our attention and what does not. We begin to value quality over quantity, substance over superficiality. This mental decluttering is essential in an era where we are bombarded with information, where our attention is constantly pulled in a thousand different directions. By simplifying our thoughts, we regain control over our focus, our energy, and ultimately, our time. The journey towards simplicity also involves a shift in perspective. It requires us to reevaluate our definitions of success, happiness, and fulfillment. We are often led to believe that more is better, more money, more possessions, more experiences. But simplicity teaches us that true satisfaction doesn't come from having more. It comes from being more, more present, more aware, more aligned with our values. It teaches us to find joy and contentment in the small things, the quiet moments, the simple pleasures that life has to offer. The beauty of simplicity is multifaceted. It's a beauty that lies in the clarity of a decluttered space, in the tranquility of a quiet mind, in the joy of small pleasures, and in the satisfaction of living a life aligned with one's values. As we embrace simplicity, we find that our lives become richer, not in material terms, but in terms of quality, meaning, and purpose. Simplicity, therefore, is not just a pathway to slow living, it is the very essence of it. Lesson 3. Embracing and enjoying your fate. I want to learn more and more to see as beautiful what is necessary in things. Then I shall be one of those who makes things beautiful. Amor Fati, let that be my love henceforth. I do not want to wage war against what is ugly. I do not want to accuse. I do not even want to accuse those who accuse. Looking away shall be my only negation. And all in all and on the whole, someday I wish to be only a yes-sayer. Friedrich Nietzsche. These profound words introduce us to a deeply philosophical yet immensely practical aspect of slow living. Embracing and enjoying your fate. An idea encapsulated in the powerful concept of Amor Fati, the love of one's fate. Amor Fati is not just a philosophical concept, it's a way of living. It's about accepting and even embracing everything that life brings your way, the good and the bad, the joyous and the painful. This acceptance does not imply passive resignation. Rather, it's an active embrace of life in all its fullness, a willingness to see every experience as an integral part of your journey. It's a recognition that every twist and turn, every obstacle and opportunity is a part of the unique tapestry of your life. Understanding and practicing Amor Fati means shifting our perspective on the events that shape our lives. It involves a radical acceptance of the present, regardless of whether it aligns with our wishes or desires. This acceptance is empowering. It frees us from the endless cycle of desire and disappointment, of constantly striving for something different, something more, something else. It allows us to find peace and joy in the way things are, rather than constantly seeking happiness in the way we think things should be. Embracing your circumstances, whatever they may be, is not about giving up on change or improvement. On the contrary, it's about recognizing that the only real change we can affect is within ourselves. In our attitudes, our perceptions, and our reactions. When we embrace our fate, we empower ourselves to respond to life's challenges with strength, grace, and wisdom. We learn to see every situation as an opportunity for growth and transformation. Amor Fati teaches us the value of gratitude. In embracing our fate, we learn to be grateful for the experiences that shape us, even the painful ones. 
We realize that our struggles are often our greatest teachers, that our hardships can be the catalyst for profound personal development. This gratitude is not superficial. It's a deep abiding appreciation for the richness and complexity of life. Living with Amor Fati also means embracing the impermanence of life. It reminds us that everything is transient, our joys, our sorrows, our successes and our failures. This awareness brings a sense of humility and perspective, a recognition that we are but small players in the grand drama of the universe. It teaches us to hold on to things lightly, to enjoy the present moment without clinging to it, to let go gracefully when the time comes. But perhaps the most beautiful aspect of Amor Fati is the way it transforms our relationship with ourselves and the world around us. When we embrace our fate, we learn to be kinder to ourselves, to forgive ourselves for our flaws and failures. We learn to extend this kindness and compassion to others, recognizing that like us, they too are navigating the complexities of fate. We develop a sense of connectedness a realization that we are all part of the same intricate web of existence. Embracing and enjoying your fate is about finding beauty and meaning in the life you have been given. It's about saying yes to life in all its forms, about making peace with the past, engaging fully with the present and facing the future with courage and optimism. It's a crucial step in the journey towards slow living a journey that encourages us to live deeply, thoughtfully, and authentically. Lesson 4. The Value of Leisure Rest is not idleness, and to lie sometimes on the grass under trees on a summer's day Listening to the murmur of the water or watching the clouds float across the sky is by no means a waste of time. John Lubbock In a culture that often equates busyness with importance and productivity with worth, it's crucial to revisit and understand the true role of leisure in our lives. Leisure in its purest form is an essential aspect of human existence a vital counterbalance to the demands of work and the stresses of daily life. Leisure is often misunderstood and unfortunately, frequently conflated with laziness. This misconception stems from a societal narrative that glorifies constant activity and productivity at the expense of rest and relaxation. However, leisure and laziness are fundamentally different. Laziness is characterized by an unwillingness to act or use energy, often leading to stagnation and a sense of dissatisfaction. Leisure, on the other hand, is a conscious choice to engage in restful activities that rejuvenate and enrich our minds and bodies. It is an active pursuit, a deliberate decision to allocate time for activities that bring joy, relaxation, and a break from the routine demands of life. The significance of leisure lies in its capacity to restore us. It provides a space for mental and physical recovery, allowing us to recharge and return to our work with renewed energy and perspective. This restorative process is not just a matter of physical rest, but also of mental relaxation. Leisure time gives us the opportunity to step away from our daily tasks and concerns, to engage in activities that we enjoy for their own sake, this could mean delving into a hobby, spending time in nature, reading a book, or simply doing nothing at all. The key is that these activities should be engaged in freely and should bring a sense of joy and relaxation. Moreover, leisure plays a crucial role in fostering creativity and productivity. Contrary to the belief that constant work yields more results, Research shows that taking regular breaks and engaging in leisure activities can significantly boost creativity and productivity. Leisure provides the mental space necessary for new ideas and perspectives to emerge. It allows the subconscious mind to process and synthesize information, leading to creative insights that often elude us in the midst of focused work. In addition, it contributes to our overall well-being and happiness. Engaging in these activities can lead to a reduction in stress, an improvement in mood, 
and an increase in overall life satisfaction. It provides an outlet for expressing ourselves, exploring our interests, and connecting with others. It fosters a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment that is different from, yet just as important as, the fulfillment we derive from our work. It's also essential for personal development and growth. It allows us to explore new interests, develop new skills and broaden our horizons. These activities can challenge us in different ways than our work does, helping us to grow and evolve as individuals. They provide an opportunity for self-discovery and self-expression, allowing us to explore aspects of our identity that might remain dormant in the hustle of daily life. However, embracing leisure requires a shift in mindset. It requires us to let go of the guilt often associated with not being productive and to recognize the value of rest and relaxation. It requires us to prioritize our well-being and to recognize that taking time for leisure is not a luxury, but a necessity. It is a reminder that life is not just about doing, but also about being, not just about productivity, but also about presence. As we continue to explore the tenets of slow living, let us embrace the value of this lesson with open arms. Let us remember that taking time to rest and engage in activities we enjoy is not a deviation from productivity, but a path to a more balanced, creative and fulfilling life. Lesson 5. Embracing Patience Adopt the pace of nature, her secret is patience. Ralph Waldo Emerson In a world increasingly driven by the desire for instant results and immediate gratification, the virtue of patience seems to be waning. The rapid advancements in technology, the pace of modern life, and the cultural shifts in how we communicate and consume have collectively fostered an expectation of quick, if not instantaneous, responses to our needs and desires. This relentless pursuit for the immediate can often leave us feeling rushed, stressed, and perpetually unsatisfied. In contrast, cultivating patience opens a pathway to a more thoughtful, peaceful, and fulfilling way of life. The cultural shift towards instant gratification is evident in various aspects of modern life. From fast food to fast fashion, from binge watching to instant messaging, the emphasis is on speed and efficiency. The ability to have our desires met almost as soon as they arise has created an underlying impatience in our approach to life. This impatience is not just external, it seeps into our internal landscape affecting how we perceive time, how we manage our expectations, and how we deal with the inevitable delays and obstacles that life presents. The result is a collective restlessness, a sense of dissatisfaction that lingers even when our immediate needs are met. Cultivating patience, therefore, becomes a crucial counterbalance to this trend. It involves developing the ability to wait to endure delay or hardship without becoming annoyed or anxious. Patience is not a passive resignation to circumstances, but an active engagement with the process of life. It's about finding contentment and peace in the journey, not just the destination. It's about understanding that some things simply cannot be rushed and that the best experiences often come from a willingness to wait. Developing patience requires both awareness and practice. It starts with recognizing the moments when impatience arises and understanding the triggers that set it off. This awareness can come from mindfulness practices such as meditation, which help us cultivate a sense of calm and presence in the moment. Mindfulness teaches us to observe our thoughts and feelings without judgment, allowing us to see the impatience without getting caught up in it. Another effective technique for cultivating patience is to deliberately put ourselves in situations where we have to wait. 
This could be as simple as standing in the longer line at the grocery store, taking the slower route to work, or refraining from using technology shortcuts. These small acts of patience can strengthen our ability to handle bigger moments of delay and frustration. They teach us to find comfort and peace in the waiting, to use the time for reflection, or simply to be present in the moment. Practicing gratitude is another powerful tool in developing patience. When we focus on the things we are grateful for, we shift our perspective from what we lack to what we have. This shift can alleviate the sense of urgency that often accompanies impatience. Gratitude helps us appreciate the present moment with all its imperfections and delays, reminding us that there is value and beauty to be found in the here and now. Additionally, setting realistic expectations is key to cultivating patience. Often, our impatience stems from expectations that are out of sync with reality. By setting more realistic goals and timelines, we can reduce the frustration and disappointment that come from unmet expectations. This doesn't mean lowering our standards or giving up on our ambitions. It simply means acknowledging that some things take time, and that's okay. Cultivating patience also involves a shift in how we view time itself. In our fast-paced world, time is often seen as a commodity, something to be maximized and optimized. Patience invites us to see time differently, not as something to be filled or managed, but as something to be experienced and savored. It teaches us to value the quality of our time, not just the quantity. Cultivating patience is about embracing a slower, more deliberate approach to life. It's about learning to wait with grace and dignity, to find joy and meaning in the process, and to trust in the natural unfolding of life. As we continue our journey through the principles of slow living, let us carry with us the wisdom of patience, the understanding that good things often take time and that there is much to be learned and appreciated in the waiting. Patience, after all, is not just a virtue. It's a pathway to a deeper, more connected, and more fulfilling life. Lesson 6. Living in the Present Moment Realize deeply that the present moment is all you ever have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. Eckhart Tolle This lesson, crucial in the philosophy of slow living, invites us to explore the art of focusing on and truly enjoying the now. In our fast-paced, forward-looking society, where future plans and past memories often overshadow our current experiences, learning to live in the present moment is both a challenge and a profound opportunity for enrichment and growth. Understanding the concept of living in the now is fundamental to embracing this art. Living in the present moment means fully engaging with our experiences as they unfold, without the filters of bias, judgment, or preoccupation with past and future events. It's about acknowledging and appreciating life as it happens recognizing that each moment, no matter how mundane, holds its own value and beauty. The present moment is where life occurs. It's where we make decisions, feel emotions, and experience the world around us. When we are fully present, we are actively participating in our lives, rather than just letting them pass us by. However, staying present and mindful in our daily lives is often easier said than done. Our minds are naturally inclined to wander, to ruminate on past events, and to worry about future possibilities. To counteract this, one practical tip is to engage in regular mindfulness or meditation practices. These practices train the mind to focus on the present and help develop the ability to return to the now when we find ourselves getting lost in thoughts of the past or future. 
Techniques like focusing on the breath, engaging in a body scan, or simply observing our current thoughts and feelings without judgment can ground us in the present moment. Another key strategy for living in the present is to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. By regularly acknowledging and appreciating what we have right here and now, we can shift our focus away from what we lack or what we desire in the future. Keeping a gratitude journal, or simply taking a few moments each day to mentally list things we are thankful for, can significantly enhance our awareness and appreciation of the present. In addition, reducing distractions is crucial in our attempt to live in the present. In a world where our attention is constantly pulled in multiple directions by technology and the demands of daily life, creating spaces free from distractions can help us engage more deeply with the present moment. This might involve setting aside specific times during the day when we unplug from our devices or creating a quiet, peaceful space in our homes where we can sit and be present without interruptions. Engaging fully in our current activities is another practical way to stay present. Often, we find ourselves performing tasks while our minds are elsewhere. By consciously focusing on the task at hand, whether it's eating a meal, having a conversation or going for a walk, we can enhance our experience of the present. This means actively listening when someone is speaking, savoring each bite of our food, or noticing the sights and sounds around us as we walk. Furthermore, practicing mindfulness in everyday activities can transform mundane tasks into opportunities for presence. Simple activities like washing dishes, taking a shower or driving can become exercises in mindfulness if we focus on the sensations and experiences associated with these activities. For instance, feeling the warmth of the water, the texture of the soap, or the movement of our hands as we wash dishes can anchor us in the present moment. Embracing the present moment also involves accepting our current emotions and experiences without judgment. Often we resist unpleasant feelings or situations which only serves to take us out of the present. By acknowledging and accepting our emotions as they arise, we allow ourselves to experience them fully and then let them go. This acceptance doesn't mean resigning ourselves to negative situations, but rather acknowledging them as part of our current reality. Living in the present moment is about embracing life as it unfolds, with all its unpredictability and imperfection. It's about letting go of the need to control or predict the future and releasing the hold that past experiences have on us. It's a journey towards being more attentive, more engaged and more alive in every moment. As we draw this exploration of the art of slow living to a close, let us take a moment to reflect on the key lessons that have illuminated our journey weaving together a tapestry of wisdom that can guide us towards a more mindful, fulfilled, and balanced existence. We began with the power of embracing daily rituals, understanding how small intentional practices can ground us in the present, creating a rhythm and a sense of stability amidst the chaos of life. These rituals, whether as simple as a morning cup of tea or a nightly moment of gratitude, serve as anchors, reminding us of the joy found in the ordinary and the importance of carving out time for ourselves. Moving forward, we delved into the beauty of simplicity, learning that the minimalist approach to life, both in terms of possessions and mindset, can lead to greater clarity, peace and satisfaction. By stripping away the non-essential, we make room for the truly important, allowing ourselves to breathe reflect, and engage more deeply with our surroundings and ourselves. In discussing embracing and enjoying your fate, 
we explored the concept of amor fati, the love of one's fate. We learned that accepting and even embracing everything life throws our way can empower us, not just to endure but to thrive. This acceptance allows us to find beauty and growth in all experiences, fostering resilience and a deep-seated contentment in the face of life's vicissitudes. The value of leisure taught us that rest is not idleness, but a vital component of a well-rounded, creative and productive life. Leisure, in its truest form, is an act of self-care and rejuvenation, allowing us to return to our daily tasks with renewed energy and perspective, and reminding us that there is more to life than just work and obligations. In cultivating patience, we learn the importance of developing the ability to endure delay or hardship without becoming annoyed or anxious. In a world obsessed with speed and immediate gratification, patience is a quiet yet powerful act of rebellion, a testament to our ability to embrace life's rhythms and find joy in the journey, not just the destination. Finally, living in the present moment brought us to the realization that the here and now is all we truly have. By engaging fully with our current experiences, we open ourselves to the richness and depth of life, finding joy, beauty and wisdom in the fleeting ordinary moments that make up our days. Remember, it's not about doing everything at a snail's pace. It's about living intentionally, mindfully and with a sense of purpose. It's about choosing quality over quantity, depth over breadth, and living in a way that aligns with your values and brings you genuine happiness. Let this exploration be a starting point, an invitation to slow down, to savor, and to reconnect with the essence of living. As you step back into the rhythm of your life, carry with you the lessons of slow living. Let them guide your choices, your actions, and your mindset. So go forth with the knowledge that in the simplicity, in the rituals, in the leisure, in the patience and in the present moment, there lies a path to a richer, more fulfilling life. Embrace it, savor it, and let it transform you. The art of slow living is a gift, one that is available to all who seek it. May your journey be filled with discovery, joy, and an abundance of moments that take your breath away. Pleasure is the beginning and the end of living happily. Epicurus The pursuit of pleasure. Is this the secret recipe for a fulfilling life? This question, simple yet profound, has intrigued thinkers and seekers of wisdom for centuries. We venture into an age-old philosophical arena, hedonism. Hedonism proposes a fundamental idea. Seeking pleasure and evading pain are the most essential and desirable objectives of human existence. Yet beneath this seemingly clear-cut concept lies a rich tapestry of thought, layered with complexity and historical depth. The lineage of this idea can be traced back to the philosophical gardens of ancient Greece, where luminaries like Epicurus postulated that the pursuit of pleasure in its many facets is the highest good and ultimate aim of life. This philosophy has resonated through the corridors of time, influencing both the realms of thought and our everyday living. But what does it genuinely entail to lead a life in pursuit of pleasure? Is such an existence as gratifying and straightforward as it appears? Our expedition into the essence of hedonism will guide us across diverse terrains of intellectual debate and introspection. We will dissect the various interpretations of pleasure. Is it the ephemeral delight of an instant gratification or something more profound and enduring? We will scrutinize the ethical dimensions of this pleasure-centric life. Does prioritizing one's own joy lead to a selfish existence or can it coexist with a moral and socially responsible life? An essential facet of our journey is the psychological underpinnings of this idea, 
particularly the concept of the hedonic treadmill. This psychological theory suggests our pursuit of pleasure might be comparable to running endlessly on a treadmill, always chasing happiness but never quite achieving a lasting state of contentment. We adapt to both positive and negative life changes and our happiness levels tend to revert to a baseline. What implications does this have for the hedonistic quest for pleasure? Does it deem the pursuit of pleasure as futile? Or does it invite us to reconceptualize the nature of happiness and its pursuit? In exploring these questions, we will also confront the critiques and challenges it faces. Ethical and moral concerns naturally arise when life's objective is defined as the pursuit of personal pleasure. How does this philosophy reconcile with these concerns? And what insights does it offer about striking a balance between personal joy and ethical conduct? Our exploration is not merely academic. Hedonism has tangible implications in today's world where the quest for pleasure manifests in everything from consumer culture to the intricacies of social media. We'll investigate how modern society mirrors hedonistic values and what this means for our understanding of joy and fulfillment. Ultimately, we will weave together the various strands of our discussion, reflecting on hedonism's role in the quest for a meaningful life. Is this the key to true happiness or a path laden with illusions and challenges? Can the principles of this philosophy be woven into a life that is balanced, ethical and truly fulfilling? Through this exploration, our goal is to not just comprehend hedonism as a philosophical concept, but to ponder its significance and practicality in our lives. Whether you are a philosophy enthusiast, someone exploring different paths to happiness, or merely interested in understanding the human inclination towards pleasure, this journey promises enlightenment, provocation, and potentially transformation. Embarking on our journey through the nuanced landscape of pleasure-focused philosophy, we delve into the core principles that define this intriguing way of life. The central tenet, the cornerstone of this philosophy, is the elevation of pleasure to the status of the highest good. This principle stands as the bedrock upon which the philosophy's entire structure is built. But what is this pleasure that is so fervently sought? Is it a singular monolithic experience, or does it encompass a spectrum of sensations and states of being? The very concept of pleasure, in its broadest sense, is multifaceted and subjective. To some, it may manifest as sensory delight, the pleasure derived from a sumptuous meal, the touch of silk, or the melody of a beautifully composed piece of music. For others, Pleasure takes a more cerebral form, the joy of intellectual discovery, the satisfaction of creative expression, or the tranquility found in meditative practices. The diversity in the interpretation of pleasure is as vast as the range of human experience itself. It's a reminder that what constitutes pleasure varies immensely from person to person, culture to culture, and even within an individual's own life journey. This brings us to the intriguing dichotomy between short-term and long-term happiness. The philosophy often criticized for promoting a lifestyle of fleeting momentary pleasures challenges us to reconsider the depth and duration of true happiness. Can a series of short-lived pleasures lead to a state of long-lasting happiness? Or is there a need for a more profound, enduring form of joy that sustains us through the vicissitudes of life? Short-term pleasures, while immediately gratifying, often carry the risk of leading to a sense of emptiness or lack of fulfillment in the long run. The pursuit of such transient joys can sometimes be akin to chasing mirages, endlessly alluring but ultimately elusive. On the other hand, focusing solely on long-term happiness might lead to a life of perpetual striving 
where the joy of the present moment is consistently sacrificed at the altar of a future that may or may not bring the anticipated satisfaction. The balance between these two forms of happiness is delicate and complex. It requires a deep understanding of one's own desires and values, as well as a mindful approach to life's choices. The art of living, according to this philosophy, is not merely in the accumulation of pleasurable experiences, but in cultivating an awareness of what brings genuine, lasting contentment. Moreover, the pursuit of pleasure must be understood within the context of one's life as a whole. It's not about relentless indulgence or hedonistic excess, but rather about finding joy in the various aspects of our existence, from the mundane to the extraordinary. It's about recognizing that pleasure can be found in simple everyday experiences, the warmth of the sun on your skin, a meaningful conversation with a friend, the satisfaction of a job well done. This perspective also invites us to consider the ethical dimensions of seeking pleasure. Is the pursuit of personal pleasure compatible with a morally responsible life? Can one's quest for happiness coexist with the well-being of others and the broader society? These questions challenge us to think deeply about the implications of our choices and the impact they have on the world around us. In exploring these questions, we encounter the concept of enlightened hedonism, a form of the philosophy that advocates for a more holistic approach to pleasure. This perspective suggests that true happiness is not found in isolated moments of pleasure, but in a life lived with purpose, meaning, and connection to others. It emphasizes the importance of balancing personal joy with social responsibility, and of finding pleasure in ways that enrich our own lives, as well as the lives of those around us. Furthermore, the interplay between physical and mental pleasures brings an additional layer of complexity to our understanding of happiness. Physical pleasures, while often more immediate and visceral, can be fleeting and sometimes lead to diminishing returns. Mental pleasures, on the other hand, such as the joy of learning, the satisfaction of personal growth, and the peace of a well-cultivated mind, often provide a deeper, more enduring sense of fulfillment. This distinction is crucial in understanding the true nature of pleasure. It compels us to look beyond the surface-level delights and to explore the more profound aspects of happiness. It encourages us to cultivate a rich inner life where the pleasures of the mind and spirit play as significant a role as the pleasures of the body. In this light, the philosophy becomes a journey of discovery, a quest not just for pleasure in its most immediate form, but for a deeper understanding of what it means to live a truly fulfilled and happy life. It's about finding joy in the journey itself, in the process of exploring, experiencing and evolving. As we navigate through this exploration, we are constantly reminded of the dynamic nature of pleasure and happiness. Our understanding of what brings us joy evolves as we move through different stages of life. The pleasures that delighted us in youth may not hold the same allure in later years. Our capacity for joy matures and deepens, and with it, our understanding of what it means to live a life in pursuit of happiness. Thus, the philosophy, far from being a simple prescription for pleasure-seeking, reveals itself as a complex and nuanced approach to life. It challenges us to think deeply about the nature of happiness, to question our assumptions, and to continually seek a deeper, more meaningful understanding of what it means to live well. The exploration of pleasure as the highest good opens up a vast and varied landscape of thought and experience. It invites us to question, to reflect, and to seek a deeper understanding of the nature of happiness. It encourages us to find a balance between the joys of the moment and the contentment of a life well lived. In this journey, we are called not just to seek pleasure, but to understand it, to appreciate it, and to find in it the keys to a truly fulfilling life. Venturing deeper into the realm of pleasure-seeking philosophy, 
we encounter a pivotal concept in understanding human happiness, the hedonic treadmill. This metaphorical treadmill represents a psychological phenomenon where an individual's level of happiness tends to remain constant over time, despite significant changes in fortune or achievements. The term, coined in the 1970s by psychologists Brickman and Campbell, has since become a cornerstone in the study of happiness and well-being. This concept challenges the notion that increases in wealth or status lead to lasting increases in happiness. People quickly adapt to changes, both positive and negative, returning to their baseline level of happiness. This adaptation process reflects the human capacity for resilience and normalization, but also suggests that the continuous pursuit of greater pleasures or achievements may not yield the expected increase in long-term happiness. The implications of the hedonic treadmill for the pursuit of pleasure are profound. If our happiness levels tend to revert to a baseline, does this mean that striving for more pleasure or better life circumstances is futile? This question strikes at the heart of the pleasure-focused philosophy and invites a re-examination of what constitutes true happiness and fulfillment. Numerous scientific studies have investigated this idea, providing insights into how and why our happiness levels tend to remain stable over time. Research has shown that people overestimate the long-term impact of major life events on their happiness. For instance, lottery winners and accident victims both return to their previous levels of happiness after a certain period. This phenomenon is not limited to extreme cases. Everyday experiences also demonstrate the human tendency to return to a stable level of happiness despite fluctuations in circumstances. The concept also intersects with the evolution of desires and expectations. As people experience improvements in their living conditions or achieve their goals, their expectations and desires often increase in tandem. This upward adjustment of expectations can lead to a perpetual cycle of desire and dissatisfaction, with each new achievement or acquisition quickly becoming the new norm thus necessitating the pursuit of yet another goal to maintain the same level of happiness. In understanding the implications of the hedonic treadmill, we must consider the potential for it to lead to a state of existential stagnation. If the pursuit of greater happiness through material gain or external achievements is inherently limited, then perhaps the key to lasting happiness lies elsewhere. This realization can be both liberating and challenging as it compels individuals to seek happiness in more sustainable and intrinsic ways, such as through personal growth, relationships, and the cultivation of a meaningful life. The critical analysis of this concept reveals its limitations and the need for diverse perspectives. Some critics argue that the treadmill model oversimplifies the complexities of human emotions and experiences. Happiness is not a one-dimensional state, but a multifaceted experience influenced by a myriad of factors, including personality, life circumstances, and cultural context. Additionally, the concept does not account for the possibility that some individuals might experience genuine, lasting changes in their level of happiness due to personal growth or significant life transformations. Another important consideration is the role of individual differences in this experience. Not everyone adapts to life changes in the same way or at the same speed. Factors such as resilience, optimism, and social support can influence how quickly and effectively an individual returns to their baseline level of happiness. This variability suggests that while the hedonic treadmill might be a useful general concept, it does not capture the full range of human experiences and responses to life's changes. Moreover, this concept invites us to explore alternative approaches to achieving happiness. If continuous pursuit of external achievements and pleasures leads to a cycle of temporary happiness and subsequent adaptation, then perhaps the focus should shift to cultivating internal sources of happiness. This could involve developing a sense of gratitude 
fostering strong relationships, engaging in meaningful work, and pursuing personal growth and self-awareness. In essence, the hedonic treadmill concept challenges us to rethink our approach to happiness and the pursuit of pleasure. It suggests that a deeper, more sustainable form of happiness might be found not in constantly seeking more, but in appreciating and finding contentment in what we already have. This perspective does not diminish the value of striving for improvement or experiencing joy, but rather emphasizes the importance of balance, mindfulness, and a deeper understanding of what truly contributes to our well-being. This theory offers valuable insights into the nature of happiness and the limitations of pursuing pleasure as a sole means to achieving a fulfilling life. It encourages a more nuanced approach to happiness, one that recognizes the complexity of human emotions and the importance of finding a balance between external achievements and internal well-being. This understanding is crucial in guiding our pursuit of a good life one that is not just about experiencing pleasure, but also about cultivating a deep sense of meaning, purpose, and satisfaction. One of the most significant critiques arises from the moral and ethical dimensions of a pleasure-focused life. Critics argue that such a philosophy inherently promotes selfishness and indulgence, potentially leading to a disregard for the welfare of others. The ethical dilemma posed by prioritizing personal pleasure above all else raises profound questions about the nature of morality and the responsibilities we hold towards our fellow human beings. The moral critique of a pleasure-centric approach is rooted in the concern that it may lead to hedonistic egoism, where the pursuit of individual pleasure could justify harmful or unethical behavior towards others. This criticism highlights the potential conflict between personal happiness and social harmony. How does one reconcile the pursuit of personal pleasure with the moral obligation to act ethically and consider the impact of one's actions on others. The ethical challenge here is to find a balance between self-interest and altruism, between the pursuit of personal happiness and the commitment to the well-being of the community. Another significant challenge to a life devoted to pleasure is its sustainability. Critics question whether a continuous pursuit of pleasure can lead to a truly fulfilling and meaningful life in the long term. They argue that an overemphasis on pleasure could result in a shallow, unfulfilling existence, devoid of deeper purpose and significance. This critique leads us to ponder the longevity and depth of satisfaction derived from a pleasure-centric approach. Is the constant pursuit of new and greater pleasures sustainable, both personally and globally? Does it lead to a never-ending cycle of desire and dissatisfaction, where each new pleasure quickly loses its allure, leading to a perpetual quest for more? These questions challenge us to reflect on the long-term implications of our pursuit of happiness and the kind of life that is truly worth living. Counter-arguments from other philosophical perspectives offer a rich tapestry of alternative views on the pursuit of pleasure and happiness. For instance, Stoicism, an ancient philosophy, advocates for a life of virtue and reason, arguing that true happiness comes from living in harmony with nature and cultivating inner virtues like wisdom, courage, and self-control. Stoics believe that external circumstances, including pleasure and pain, are indifferent to true happiness, which is found in the cultivation of a virtuous character. Another contrasting viewpoint comes from existentialism, which emphasizes individual freedom, choice, and personal responsibility. Existentialists argue that meaning and fulfillment in life are not predetermined or found in external pleasures, but are created through authentic choices and engagement with one's existence. 
They challenge the idea that happiness is the ultimate goal, proposing instead that living authentically and embracing the inherent absurdities and challenges of life is what gives life its value. Buddhist philosophy also offers a distinct perspective, focusing on the alleviation of suffering through the cessation of desire. Buddhism teaches that attachment to pleasure and aversion to pain are the root causes of suffering. The path to true happiness, according to Buddhism, lies in overcoming these attachments and cultivating qualities like compassion, mindfulness, and inner peace. These diverse philosophical perspectives provide valuable insights into the complexities of human happiness and the pursuit of a good life. They challenge us to think critically about the nature of pleasure and happiness and to consider alternative paths to fulfillment and well-being. They invite us to explore deeper dimensions of existence beyond the immediate gratification of pleasure and to seek a life that is rich in meaning, purpose and ethical integrity. The critiques and challenges of a pleasure-focused philosophy bring to light the ethical, moral, and practical concerns associated with such an approach. They compel us to consider the broader implications of our pursuit of happiness and to seek a balance between personal pleasure and the greater good. These critiques also open the door to alternative philosophical perspectives, offering a wider lens through which to view the complexities of life and the pursuit of happiness. In exploring these challenges and counter-arguments, we gain a more nuanced understanding of what it means to live a good and meaningful life. In the contemporary landscape, the echoes of pleasure-seeking philosophies are evident in various facets of modern life. These manifestations offer a window into how the pursuit of pleasure shapes our society and individual lives. To fully grasp the modern context of this philosophy, we must look at both its prevalence in today's culture and the ways in which it can be balanced with a sense of responsibility and ethical living. One of the most conspicuous examples of pleasure-seeking in modern society is found in consumer culture. The relentless pursuit of new and better products, from the latest technological gadgets to fashion and luxury items, reflects a collective yearning for the pleasure derived from material possessions. This phenomenon is not just about the utility of these items, but the joy and status they confer. The advertising industry plays a crucial role in this, often tapping into our deepest desires for happiness, success and social acceptance, thereby fueling the continuous cycle of desire and consumption. Social media platforms also serve as a modern canvas for the display and pursuit of pleasurable experiences. The curated lifestyles showcased on these platforms often emphasize aesthetic pleasure, leisure and socialization creating an image of an ideal life centered around continuous enjoyment and fulfillment. This portrayal can significantly influence individual aspirations and lifestyle choices, driving a relentless quest for experiences that mirror those idealized images. In addition to consumer culture and social media, the rise of experience-focused industries such as travel, entertainment, and gastronomy reflects a societal shift towards valuing experiences over material possession. The growing emphasis on living life to the fullest, often characterized by unique and luxurious experiences, illustrates the modern inclination towards finding pleasure in varied and often extravagant ways. It becomes imperative to consider how one can incorporate the pursuit of pleasure in a manner that is responsible and sustainable. Balancing the pursuit of pleasure with responsibility involves a conscious effort to recognize the impact of our choices on ourselves, others, and the environment. One approach to achieving this balance is through the concept of mindful consumption. Mindful consumption encourages a shift from quantity to quality, 
appreciating and deriving pleasure from fewer but more meaningful possessions. Another aspect of responsible pleasure-seeking involves cultivating an awareness of the social and psychological effects of our lifestyle choices. This includes being mindful of the influence of social media on our perceptions and aspirations and striving for authentic experiences that are fulfilling on a deeper level rather than merely replicating idealized lifestyles. Moreover, incorporating responsibility into the pursuit of pleasure also means recognizing the importance of giving back to the community and engaging in activities that contribute to the well-being of others. Acts of kindness, volunteerism, and philanthropy can provide profound pleasure and satisfaction, offering a more holistic approach to happiness that encompasses both personal joy and the joy of contributing to the greater good. The modern context of pleasure-seeking also invites a re-evaluation of our relationship with work and productivity. In a culture that often equates success with constant busyness and achievement, finding pleasure in leisure, relaxation and self-care becomes an act of balance. It challenges the notion that constant productivity is the sole path to fulfillment, proposing instead that taking time for enjoyment and rest is essential for a well-rounded and satisfying life. As we come to the conclusion of our exploration into the philosophy of hedonism, it is essential to pause and reflect on the journey we've undertaken. We embarked on this exploration to understand the nuances of a life driven by the pursuit of pleasure, and what we found is a complex tapestry of ideas, challenges and perspectives that transcend mere indulgence. Our journey began by defining the core principle of this philosophy, the elevation of pleasure as the highest good. We discovered that pleasure is a multifaceted concept, varying greatly from individual to individual, and encompassing both physical sensations and deeper intellectual joys. The discussion of short-term versus long-term happiness revealed the delicate balance between immediate joy and enduring contentment challenging us to reconsider the depth and sustainability of true happiness. We then delved into the psychological underpinnings of this philosophy through the lens of the hedonic treadmill. This concept illustrated the human tendency to return to a baseline level of happiness, despite significant life changes. It challenged the notion that constant pursuit of greater pleasures leads to lasting happiness, urging us to rethink our approach to happiness and the true sources of fulfillment. The moral and ethical implications of a pleasure-centric life were also scrutinized. We grappled with the potential conflict between the pursuit of personal pleasure and the ethical responsibility towards others. The sustainability of such a lifestyle, especially in the context of environmental and social well-being, was questioned, leading us to ponder the long-term consequences of our pursuit of happiness. In the modern context, we observed how the philosophy manifests in consumer culture, social media, and the experience economy. We recognize the need for balance and responsibility in our pursuit of pleasure, acknowledging the importance of mindful consumption, authentic experiences, and a harmonious relationship between work, leisure, and personal fulfillment. Reflecting personally on this philosophical journey, it becomes apparent that the pursuit of pleasure, while a natural and significant aspect of human life, requires careful consideration and balance. It is not the singular path to a fulfilling life, but a component of a broader, more complex equation that includes ethical living, personal growth and social responsibility. True happiness, it seems, lies not in the relentless chase of pleasure, but in finding a harmonious balance between our desires, our values, and our connections with the world around us. I invite you, the viewer, to reflect on your own relationship with pleasure and happiness. 
Consider how the pursuit of pleasure shapes your life choices and well-being. Are there aspects of your life where balance could be improved? How do your actions align with your deeper values and the impact you wish to have on the world? Let us take these insights and use them as a guide to navigate the complexities of life. Let us seek pleasure not as an end in itself, but as a part of a richer tapestry of experiences that make up a meaningful life. Let's strive for a happiness that is sustainable, ethically grounded, and deeply fulfilling. Remember, the pursuit of a good life is not just about seeking joy in every moment, but in crafting a life that is, in its entirety, a joy to live. May this exploration inspire you to find your unique path to happiness, one that harmonizes pleasure with purpose, fulfillment with responsibility, and individual joy with the greater good. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Epictetus In the bustling, ever-changing landscape of our modern lives, where each day presents a new challenge, a new opportunity and a new lesson, there lies a timeless philosophy that still echoes with relevance and wisdom. Stoicism An ancient Hellenistic philosophy Stoicism was founded in Athens by Zeno of Citium in the early 3rd century BC, yet its principles continue to resonate powerfully in the hearts and minds of people across the globe, transcending time and culture. At its core, Stoicism teaches the development of self-control and fortitude as a means to overcome destructive emotions. It is not about suppressing our feelings, but rather understanding our reactions to them. In a world where we often feel out of control, Stoicism offers a lantern of clarity, guiding us to focus on what we can control, our thoughts, our actions, and our responses. But Stoicism is more than just a philosophical discourse, it is a practical toolkit for living a fulfilled life. It encourages us to confront our fears, challenges us to question our desires, and invites us to value simplicity. Stoics like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, and Epictetus weren't just thinkers. They were practitioners of a way of living. Their teachings, encapsulated in meditations, letters, and discourses, offer a blueprint for facing life's adversities with grace and resilience. As we embark on this journey through 12 Stoic lessons to transform your life, we are not just exploring ancient texts or dissecting philosophical concepts. We are engaging in a deeply personal and transformative experience. Each lesson is a stepping stone towards self-mastery, peace of mind, and a deeper understanding of the human condition. These lessons challenge the very way we perceive our existence, our values, and our interactions with the world around us. The lessons range from understanding what lies within our power to control, to embracing the impermanence of life. They teach us to appreciate the present, cultivate discipline, and develop emotional resilience. Through these lessons, Stoicism provides a framework for dealing with the complexities and uncertainties of life. It teaches us to detach ourselves from external outcomes and focus instead on our internal virtues, a shift in perspective that can lead to profound changes in how we live our day-to-day -day lives. These Stoic teachings are not abstract theories meant to be pondered in isolation, but are deeply practical and applicable. They address everyday concerns, from handling stress and managing anger, to finding happiness and understanding our place in the world. By integrating these lessons into our daily routines, we can transform not only our mindset but our actions and ultimately our lives. As we explore these 12 lessons, Remember that Stoicism is not about becoming indifferent or unfeeling. It's about finding balance, understanding our emotions, and using reason to navigate life's ups and downs. It's about building resilience, not just to endure, but to thrive, regardless of what life throws our way. 
In a world that often feels chaotic and unpredictable, Stoicism stands as a beacon of strength and stability. It teaches us that while we cannot always control what happens to us, we can control how we respond. In this lies our power, our dignity, and our freedom. As we delve into these lessons, let us embrace the Stoic journey, not just as a philosophical exercise, but as a practical guide to living a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Lesson 1. Understand what is within your control. We are disturbed not by what happens to us, but by our thoughts about what happens. Epictetus. This profound quote by Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, lays the foundation for our first lesson. Understanding what is within our control. In the realm of Stoicism, this principle is paramount. It teaches us that the key to peace of mind and personal freedom lies in focusing our energy and attention on things we can control, rather than on those we cannot. The Stoics divide the world into two domains, things we can control, our thoughts, perceptions and actions, and things we cannot control, which includes everything external to us, like the behavior of others, the past and the future. This lesson urges us to examine our daily life, to recognize and accept this division. For instance, you cannot control the weather, the traffic, or other people's actions, but you can control your response to these events. If it rains during your outdoor event, you can either lament the weather, which is beyond your control, or adapt your plans and attitude, which is within your control. This approach is not about passivity or resignation. Instead, it's about empowering yourself by investing your energy in what you can influence and letting go of the frustration and stress that come from trying to control the uncontrollable. By adopting this mindset, we cultivate a sense of inner peace and resilience. It helps us to become more adaptable, less reactive, and more measured in our responses to life's challenges. It's about shifting our focus from external events to our internal landscape, our thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes, and how these can either serve or hinder us. This lesson isn't just about avoiding unnecessary stress. It's about recognizing where our true power lies and using it to live a more fulfilled life. Lesson 2. Embrace obstacles as opportunities. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Marcus Aurelius. The second lesson delves into a principle famously encapsulated by Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher. The idea that obstacles can actually be opportunities is not just a motivational platitude, but a cornerstone of Stoic resilience. It's about a radical reframing of challenges, setbacks and hardships. Instead of viewing them as impediments, we are encouraged to see them as opportunities for growth, learning and character development. This concept is often easier said than done as our natural inclination is to avoid difficulties and seek comfort. However, Stoicism invites us to question this instinct and instead embrace challenges as a means of practicing virtues like courage, patience and perseverance. When faced with a difficult situation, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? We can ask, what can this teach me? Or, how can I use this to become stronger? A real-world application of this lesson could be in our professional lives. A career setback, like losing a job or facing a demotion, can be reframed as an opportunity to reevaluate our path, acquire new skills, or even start a new venture. It's about finding value in adversity, not passively, 
but actively seeking ways to transform it into a stepping stone for personal and professional development. Embracing obstacles as opportunities is more than mere optimism. It's a strategy for life. It's about cultivating a mindset that sees every difficulty as a test of our character and every setback as a chance to practice virtue. It's a lesson in resilience, adaptability, and the power of a positive perspective. Lesson 3. Living in the present moment. Be where you are, otherwise you will miss your life. Buddha. Though this quote comes from Buddha, it beautifully aligns with Stoic principles, particularly the practice of mindfulness and presence. Stoicism, much like Buddhism, places great emphasis on living in the present moment. This lesson is about the art of presence, the cultivation of an acute awareness of the now. It's an antidote to the distractions, anxieties, and incessant busyness that characterizes modern life. Mindfulness in Stoicism is about paying attention to our thoughts, our actions, and our surroundings with a clear and focused mind. It's about being fully engaged with whatever we are doing at the moment, whether it's having a conversation, eating a meal, or simply walking. This practice helps us appreciate the richness of life, reduces stress, and enhances our overall well-being. But mindfulness is more than just a practice. It's a way of living. It's about being aware of our thoughts and emotions without getting swept away by them. It's about observing the world around us without jumping to judgment or letting biases cloud our perception. This heightened sense of awareness enables us to respond to life situations with wisdom and equanimity rather than reacting impulsively. In practical terms, mindfulness can manifest in simple actions. It could be as basic as truly listening when someone speaks, rather than thinking about what you'll say next. Or it could involve taking a moment to breathe and center yourself when you feel overwhelmed or stressed. Practicing mindfulness means you are less likely to be caught up in worries about the future or regrets about the past, allowing you to live more fully in the present. This lesson invites us to slow down, to savor the present, and to cultivate a deeper connection with ourselves and the world around us. By practicing mindfulness and presence, we not only enhance our own lives, but also enrich our interactions with others fostering a more compassionate and understanding world. Lesson 4. Building Self-Discipline No person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have. Seneca The fourth lesson brings us to the crucial role of self-discipline in achieving personal growth. Seneca's words echo the stoic belief that true power lies in self-control and the disciplined use of our resources, be it time, abilities, or material possessions. Self-discipline in the stoic sense is not just about restraint or austerity, but about making conscious, rational decisions that align with our values and goals. It involves recognizing and resisting impulsive desires, not to deny pleasure, but to avoid being enslaved by whims and fleeting temptations. In cultivating self-discipline, we are encouraged to take a hard look at our daily habits and lifestyle choices. Are they reflective of our deepest values? Do they contribute to our growth and well-being, or do they hinder it? The practice of self-discipline asks us to be mindful of how we spend our time how we react to our emotions, and how we engage with our desires. It's about choosing long-term satisfaction over short-term gratification. Understanding that true happiness comes not from external sources, but from living a life of virtue and purpose. Moreover, self-discipline is about mastering ourselves, not just our actions, but our thoughts and reactions. It involves setting boundaries for ourselves and sticking to them, even when it's challenging. 
This could mean limiting distractions to focus on important tasks, saying no to unnecessary commitments, or practicing moderation in pleasures. It's about finding a balanced understanding that while we cannot control everything in our lives, we can control ourselves. Cultivating self-discipline also means recognizing and appreciating what we already have. It's about shifting our focus from what we lack to what we possess and using our resources wisely and gratefully. This mindset fosters a sense of abundance and contentment, which is essential for personal growth and happiness. In the grand scheme, self-discipline is not just a tool for individual achievement, but a path to personal freedom and fulfillment. Lesson 5. Develop Emotional Resilience We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Seneca in this fifth lesson, we delve into the stoic view of emotions and the importance of developing emotional resilience. The quote from Seneca reminds us that much of our suffering is a product of our thoughts and fears, rather than actual events. Stoicism teaches that while we cannot always control what happens to us, we can control our reactions to these events. This is where emotional resilience comes in. It's the ability to face our emotions, understand them, and respond to them in a healthy and constructive way. Emotional resilience, according to Stoicism, is not about suppressing or ignoring our feelings. It's about acknowledging them, understanding their origin, and then using reason to decide the best course of action. It's about recognizing that while emotions are natural, they should not dictate our decisions or behaviors. For instance, it's natural to feel anger when wronged, but it's how we handle that anger that defines us. Do we let it lead to rash actions and hurtful words, or do we take a moment to step back, assess the situation, and respond in a way that aligns with our principles? This lesson also teaches us the value of perspective. Often, our emotional reactions are amplified by the way we perceive situations. By learning to view challenges and setbacks through a more objective lens, we can reduce unnecessary distress and respond more calmly and effectively. This involves questioning our automatic thoughts and beliefs and considering alternative interpretations of events. Developing emotional resilience is a lifelong journey. It requires regular practice and mindfulness. It involves cultivating virtues like patience, tolerance, and courage. It means learning to find the middle ground between feeling too much and feeling too little. By developing emotional resilience, we equip ourselves to handle life's ups and downs with grace and equanimity, leading to a more peaceful and fulfilling life. Lesson 6. Memento Mori You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. Marcus Aurelius The sixth lesson is a profound one rooted in the stoic practice of Memento Mori, the reminder that we must die. This might sound morbid at first, but its intention is far from it. This lesson is about recognizing the impermanence of life as a way to value our time and live more meaningfully. Marcus Aurelius' words remind us that life is fleeting, and we should live each moment with the awareness that it could be our last. Understanding the impermanence of life encourages us to focus on what truly matters. It pushes us to question our priorities, our values, and how we spend our time. Are we pursuing things that are genuinely important to us, or are we caught up in the trivialities and distractions of daily life? This lesson teaches us to live with intention, to cherish each moment, and to focus on creating a positive impact. Moreover, the awareness of life's impermanence fosters a sense of gratitude and appreciation. It helps us to not take our time, our relationships, and our experiences for granted, 
It encourages us to be more present, more compassionate and more forgiving. We are reminded to cherish our loved ones, to pursue our passions and to make the most of the time we have. In a broader sense, this lesson is about accepting the natural cycle of life and death. It's about understanding that everything has its time and that clinging to the impermanent only leads to suffering. By embracing the transience of life, we learn to live more fully, to let go of petty grievances, and to focus on what truly enriches our lives. It's a call to action to live authentically, courageously, and with purpose, knowing that our time is limited but our impact can be lasting. Lesson 7. Practice Gratitude Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Epicurus In Lesson 7 we explore the timeless virtue of gratitude, a key element in Stoic philosophy as well as in the teachings of Epicurus. Gratitude is about appreciating what we already possess, rather than lamenting what we lack. This lesson encourages a shift in perspective from scarcity to abundance, focusing on the wealth that exists in our current situation. Practicing gratitude doesn't mean ignoring life's difficulties, but it involves a conscious decision to acknowledge and appreciate the positives. This philosophy teaches us to find contentment in what we have, rather than constantly seeking more in the belief that it will bring happiness. It's about understanding that happiness does not come from external acquisitions, but from an internal state of mind. Gratitude helps in building a mindset where one can find joy and satisfaction in the present moment, regardless of circumstances. It transforms our relationship with life, turning every experience, even the most mundane, into a source of joy. Moreover, gratitude extends beyond personal benefit. It enhances our relationships, as expressing appreciation for others fosters connection and kindness. It's about recognizing the value of people, experiences, and even challenges, acknowledging their contribution to our growth and well-being. In a world that often emphasizes the pursuit of more, practicing gratitude is a powerful antidote to discontent and a catalyst for happiness and fulfillment. By regularly reflecting on what we are thankful for, we cultivate a deeper appreciation for life. This could involve simple practices like maintaining a gratitude journal or taking a moment each day to acknowledge something we're grateful for. Over time, this practice can lead to profound changes in how we perceive our lives and the world around us, fostering a sense of well-being and contentment. Lesson 8. Focus on personal excellence. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. Marcus Aurelius. Lesson 8 delves into the concept of arete, a Greek word often translated as virtue or excellence, which is central to Stoic philosophy. Marcus Aurelius's call to action emphasizes the importance of personal excellence, not just as a concept, but as a way of living. It's about striving to be the best version of oneself in all aspects of life. This pursuit of excellence is not about external success or societal recognition, but about internal growth and virtue. In Stoicism, virtue is considered the highest good, and it encompasses qualities like wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. Focusing on personal excellence means actively working to cultivate these virtues in our daily lives. It involves making choices that align with our highest values and striving for moral and ethical integrity, even in the face of challenges. This lesson teaches that our true worth is determined not by our achievements or possessions, 
but by the quality of our character. It's about setting high standards for ourselves and continually seeking to improve, not out of a sense of inadequacy, but from a desire to live a virtuous and meaningful life. This quest for personal excellence is a lifelong journey, one that requires self-reflection, discipline, and a commitment to personal growth. Moreover, the focus on personal excellence has a ripple effect. By bettering ourselves, we contribute to the betterment of our communities and the world at large. We become role models, inspire others, and create a positive impact through our actions and choices. This lesson is a call to put philosophy into practice, to embody the virtues we admire, and to live a life of purpose and integrity. Lesson 9. Stop caring what people think. I have often wondered how it is that every man loves himself more than all the rest of men, but yet sets less value on his own opinions of himself than on the opinions of others. Marcus Aurelius. Lesson 9 addresses a common human tendency, the pursuit of external validation. Marcus Aurelius's observation highlights a paradox in human behavior, our propensity to seek approval and recognition from others, often at the expense of our own self-esteem and values. This lesson urges us to let go of this need for external approval and to find validation within ourselves. The stoic attitude towards external validation is one of gentle indifference. It's not about becoming aloof or uncaring about others' opinions, but about not letting them dictate our self-worth or choices. The Stoics teach that true peace and freedom come from within, not from the fleeting and often fickle approval of others. This lesson encourages us to ground our sense of self in our own values and judgments, rather than external metrics of success or recognition. Letting go of the need for external approval is both liberating and empowering. It frees us from the constraints of societal expectations and allows us to live more authentically. It's about having the courage to be true to ourselves, to follow our own path, and to make decisions based on what we believe is right, not what we think will please others. Moreover, this lesson teaches us to develop a stronger sense of self-reliance and confidence. When we stop relying on external validation to feel good about ourselves, we build a more stable and enduring foundation for self-esteem. We learn to appreciate and accept ourselves with all our strengths and flaws, and this self-acceptance becomes the bedrock of our well-being and happiness. In practice, letting go of the need for external approval involves cultivating self-awareness and self-compassion. It's about recognizing our inherent worth, independent of our achievements or how others perceive us. It's a journey towards inner confidence, where we learn to validate, celebrate, and trust ourselves. By embracing this stoic lesson, we can live more freely, authentically, and joyfully guided by our inner compass rather than external pressures or expectations. Lesson 10. Accept change. Nothing endures but change. Heraclitus. Lesson 10 brings us to a fundamental truth echoed by Heraclitus an ancient Greek philosopher whose ideas resonate deeply with Stoic thought. The constant and inevitable nature of change. Understanding and accepting change as an intrinsic part of life is crucial for developing resilience and living harmoniously. This lesson is not merely about acknowledging that change occurs, but about embracing it as a natural unceasing rhythm of existence. Change can often be uncomfortable or even frightening, especially when it disrupts our plans or challenges our sense of stability. 
However, resisting change is akin to resisting the very nature of life. Stoicism teaches us to flow with this inevitable current, adapting to new circumstances with flexibility and composure. It's about finding stability within ourselves amidst the flux of the external world. This acceptance of change encourages a mindset of openness and adaptability. It prepares us to face life's uncertainties with a calm and balanced approach. Whether it's a change in our personal lives, like a career shift or the end of a relationship or larger societal changes, the ability to adapt is a key to inner peace and resilience. Accepting change doesn't mean being passive or resigned. It's about actively engaging with life, ready to respond and grow with each turn. Moreover, understanding the nature of change fosters a deeper appreciation for the present moment. Knowing that nothing lasts forever, we learn to cherish our current experiences, relationships, and joys. It encourages us not to take things for granted and to live more fully and mindfully. This lesson is a powerful antidote to complacency and a call to engage actively with life, embracing its ever-changing nature. Lesson 11. Practice Compassion and Empathy Kindness is invincible, provided it's sincere, not hypocritical or a matter of show. Marcus Aurelius In Lesson 11, we explore the virtues of compassion and empathy, fundamental aspects of Stoicism and beautifully encapsulated in Marcus Aurelius's words. Stoicism often emphasizes personal resilience and strength, but equally important is the cultivation of kindness and understanding toward others. This lesson is about recognizing the shared human experience and extending empathy and compassion to those around us. Practicing compassion and empathy involves seeing beyond our own perspective and understanding the emotions, experiences, and motivations of others. It's about acknowledging the struggles and sufferings of others and responding with kindness and support. In a world where individualism often takes precedence, this stoic lesson reminds us of the value of community, connection, and care for others. Moreover, compassion and empathy have a transformative effect, not only on those who receive it, but also on those who practice it. Engaging with others in a compassionate manner fosters deeper connections, reduces conflicts, and enhances our sense of well-being. It helps in building a more understanding, tolerant, and peaceful society. This practice isn't about pity or condescension, but about genuine connection and a recognition of the intrinsic value of every individual. In practical terms, practicing compassion and empathy can range from simple acts of kindness to more significant gestures of support and understanding. It involves listening actively, offering help without expecting anything in return, and trying to understand the world from another's perspective. This lesson guides us to be more patient, less judgmental, and more open-hearted in our daily interactions. Lesson 12, Reflect and Review Regularly Examine your actions. Don't let your efforts be aimless. Marcus Aurelius The final lesson, Lesson 12, focuses on the stoic practice of self-reflection, a fundamental tool for personal growth and self-improvement. Marcus Aurelius, known for his reflective meditations, highlights the importance of regularly examining our actions, intentions, and progress. This lesson is about cultivating a habit of introspection, ensuring that our actions align with our values and goals. Self-reflection in Stoicism is not just a passive review of events, but an active, critical examination of our thoughts, behaviors, and choices. It's about asking ourselves tough questions, 
Are we living in accordance with our principles? Are our efforts directed toward meaningful goals? What can we learn from our experiences? This practice helps in identifying areas for improvement, acknowledging our strengths, and making conscious, deliberate choices about how to live. This lesson also involves setting aside time for reflection, which could be daily, weekly, or at any regular interval. It's a moment to pause in the hustle of life, to look inward, and to reassess our path. This practice can take many forms, from journaling to meditation, or simply quiet contemplation. The key is to approach it with honesty, openness, and a willingness to grow. For regular reflection fosters a deeper understanding of ourselves. It helps us become more self-aware, recognizing patterns in our thoughts and behaviors that may be helpful or hindering. This awareness is crucial for personal development as it forms the basis for making meaningful changes in our lives. It encourages us to live intentionally, not on autopilot, but as active creators of our own life story. As we reach the conclusion of our journey through the profound and timeless teachings of Stoicism, it's essential to pause and reflect on the immense wisdom we've encountered. This exploration has not merely been an academic exercise, but a deep dive into a philosophy that holds the potential to transform our lives in the most practical and meaningful ways. The 12 lessons we've discussed are more than just philosophical concepts. They are tools, strategies, and insight that can guide us in navigating the complexities and challenges of modern life with greater resilience, purpose, and fulfillment. In our first lesson, we learned about understanding what is within our control, a principle that empowers us to focus our energy and efforts on things we can influence, leading to a life of efficiency and inner peace. The second lesson taught us to embrace obstacles as opportunities, a perspective that transforms challenges into catalysts for growth and strength. Practicing mindfulness and presence, our third lesson, brought us to the realization of the richness and depth of the present moment, freeing us from the shackles of past regrets and future anxieties. The fourth lesson on cultivating self-discipline highlighted the importance of mastering our impulses and using our resources wisely, laying the foundation for a life of fulfillment and achievement. Developing emotional resilience, as we discovered in Lesson 5, is about facing our emotions with wisdom and balance, thus equipping us to handle life's ups and downs with grace. The sixth lesson on understanding the impermanence of life reminded us of the preciousness of each moment and the importance of living with intention and gratitude. Practicing gratitude, our seventh lesson, opened our eyes to the abundance that surrounds us, fostering a sense of contentment and joy in what we already have. Focusing on personal excellence, the eighth lesson, challenged us to strive for the highest virtues of character, leading to a life of integrity and purpose. The ninth lesson on letting go of the need for external approval taught us the liberating power of self-validation and the importance of trusting our own judgment and worth. In the tenth lesson, we learned to understand and accept the nature of change, embracing the fluidity of life with adaptability and openness. Practicing compassion and empathy, as discussed in the eleventh lesson, showed us the transformative power of kindness and understanding, not just in our lives but in the lives of those around us. Finally, the twelfth lesson on reflecting and reviewing regularly emphasized the importance of introspection and self-awareness in our journey towards continuous improvement and self-mastery. These stoic lessons, when integrated into our daily lives, can lead to profound transformations. They teach us to navigate life with wisdom, resilience, and virtue. They encourage us to build stronger relationships, foster a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world, 
and lead a life that aligns with our highest values and ideals. By adopting these principles, we can find a sense of balance and fulfillment amidst the chaos and unpredictability of modern life. As we conclude this exploration, I encourage you to not just contemplate these lessons, but to actively integrate them into your daily routine. Let them be your guide in times of uncertainty, your anchor in times of turmoil, and your beacon of hope in times of darkness. Remember that the journey of personal growth and self-improvement is ongoing and ever-evolving. Each day presents a new opportunity to practice these teachings, to learn, to grow, and to become a better version of ourselves. In the words of Seneca, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. Let this be our motivation as we move forward. Embrace these stoic lessons, apply them in your life, and witness the transformative power they hold. Let them inspire you to live with purpose, act with integrity and face life's challenges with courage and wisdom. Your journey through Stoicism is not just about self-improvement, it's about crafting a life of meaning, happiness and fulfillment. Step forward with confidence and enthusiasm, armed with the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, and create a life that resonates with virtue, resilience, and joy.